Recording started. All right, Science Story students. Uh, today we're doing the second um, installment, second topic in the circulation and immunity um, module. Okay, and today we're going to take a look at the human circulatory system. Now, the body circulatory system must also work to quickly and efficiently transport blood to and from the cells. Now, what does blood have that the cells need? Well, it has a couple of different things. Oxygen is one of the main ones. Um, cells without oxygen can't produce energy that is required for life processes. Okay, and the other thing that's needed to provide energy for life processes is glucose. Okay, so both glucose, which is blood sugar, um, and oxygen are going to the cells in the bloodstream. Okay, um, so oxygen and glucose are the main ones, but also there's wastes that are taken away from the cell. Uh, carbon dioxide and water are products of cellular respiration, and as such, they're, they're waste materials. Carbon dioxide, if it builds up in, in large amounts, can become acidic and become lactic acid, and in extreme cases, if it changes blood pH, it can be deadly, okay? So you have nutrients going to the cells, oxygen and glucose being some of the main ones, and waste going away from the cells, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, now also take a look at the, the basic um, sort of setup here. You've, you've got the heart, which we talked about last day, but you have, say, leaving the heart, you have large veins leaving the heart, like the, the aorta. Okay, and that goes to smaller arterioles. So arteries turn into smaller arterioles, which turn into capillaries. Now, the capillaries uh, network is where you have, you know, oxygen-rich um, aortic, well, arterial blood, in most cases, becoming oxygen-poor, um, venous blood, okay? And then you have, um, you know, venules, which are smaller veins, becoming large veins, uh, like the vena cava, which is going to enter or empty into the heart again. Okay, so just remember, as you go away from the heart, you have large to small blood vessels, and towards the heart, you have small to large blood vessels. Now, what is an artery? Well, an artery is a thick-walled blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart. Arteries are away, so A and A. Now, veins go towards the heart. Now, they're thinner-walled blood vessels because they don't have to withstand the same amount of pressure. The arterial blood is higher pressure as well. The venous blood is low pressure and low oxygen in general. Um, the only exception would be the uh, pulmonary artery, which would have uh, low oxygen blood, and the pulmonary vein, which would have high oxygen blood. Okay. <clears throat> now, the veins carry blood towards the heart. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels that connect the smallest branch of an artery to the smallest branch of a vein. So that's where you have your, um, you know, venous blood turning into arterial or arterial blood turning into venous blood. A vena cava, that's the largest veins in the body that carry oxygen poor blood to the heart. Now the pulmonary artery is a large blood vessel that carries oxygen poor blood from the heart's right ventricle to the lungs. And can we discuss that last day when we talked about the heart? So you should review that if you don't remember that. Now, the aorta, that's the largest artery in the body, and it carries oxygen-rich blood from the left ventricle of the heart. Okay, now here you have a little bit of a diagram, arteries, veins, capillaries. Um, arteries have a thick elastic walls to withstand the pressure of a pumping heart. As the arteries get further away from the heart and aorta, they branch out and get smaller, and turn into these things called arterioles, which are basically small arteries. Now the arterioles get smaller and will eventually go down to capillary size. Now notice the the I guess cross section here. Artery, you see it's got a, a large muscular layer, okay, which it makes it more elastic and also connective tissue with elastic 
fibers. Okay, you still have some um, muscle tissue also in, in the venous blood, and those will contract to help keep the blood flowing up. So as we walk, we end up helping the venous blood get back towards the heart, you know, as our muscles contract. Um, and notice here, there's a valve. Now there are valves and veins which prevent the backflow of blood. So once it goes forward, it cannot go backwards again. So that helps with the low pressure blood to, to make it into the heart again. Now veins have thinner walls that contain blood under lower pressure. And they have the one-way valves, which we just talked about, to prevent the black flow of blood flowing against gravity. Now, blood vessels contain multiple layers to provide strength, elasticity, and functionality. On the very inside, you see the, the endothelium, basement membrane, elastic layer, smooth muscle, another elastic layer, and connective tissue. Now here's what I was talking about previously, uh, the venous blood flow. Muscle contractions help move um, the blood up as it flows against gravity. Okay, so here you can see the blood's not moving, uh, the calf muscles is closed, but when it contracts you can see it forces some of the blood up through this valve, but once it gets through the valve it can't come back down again because these are one-way valves. Okay, so sometimes people who are, you know, say in a, a coma state, okay, um, they have poor circulation because they're not moving around and the blood starts to pool. And they can get bed sores. And um, that's why sometimes you'll, you'll see nurses of, of these patients that go and actually move their limbs around and rub them down <clears throat> to get the circulation going again. Okay, so the path of blood flow uh, goes from the heart to the arteries to arterioles to capillaries. Then from the capillaries, so here you see, um, from the heart, arteries, which are larger, get smaller, these arterioles, and then turn into capillaries, and the capillaries go into the venules, smaller veins, which turn into the larger veins, and then back to the heart. Now the capillary network joins arterioles to venules. So you can see here arterioles which still have uh, oxygen rich blood. As you go towards the venules you can see that the color of the blood becomes uh, less red and more blue. Now this blue color indicates the blood has um, not much oxygen because hemoglobin when it's attached to an oxygen molecule will turn red and that's why blood is red in the first place. So if you don't have much oxygen you will not have you know the same kind of red color. It's dark and bluish. Now the capillary networks will deliver nutrients to cells. Now the, the capillaries you can see here are so small that the blood cells are going through uh, pretty much single file or close to single file. And there's these very thin membranes of the capillaries that are in between blood cells and the tissue cells. Now the oxygen that's being carried on the hemoglobin molecule, the red blood cells, is going to diffuse from high concentration to low concentration. And as it diffuses across, you have all of these molecules, all of these cells rather, um, becoming oxygenated. Again, and the other nutrient that's going across here, of course, is uh, glucose. And then the waste materials are going from their high concentration in the body tissues. Okay, so they've got high concentration of, of waste in the, in the tissues and the cells. And that's going to diffuse into the capillaries and be picked up in the bloodstream and taken back to uh, the heart and the lungs and, and gotten rid of. Varicose veins. Oh, that's very dark. Okay, now if veins become stretched and the valves are damaged. Blood in the veins can pool and the veins become raised to a condition called varicose veins. Okay, in the varicose vein, you can you end up with some backflow. 
of blood and that starts to pool and stretch the vein a little bit. Blood pressure. So you've heard people talk about blood pressure, but we want to understand it in more detail. Um, in a very basic way, blood pressure is the pressure exerted by blood against the walls of blood vessels and arteries. It's measured in millimeters of mercury, so mmHg, that's millimeters of mercury, um, and that's the unit for blood pressure. Now, the systolic pressure is the pressure exerted on the artery walls when the heart's ventricles are contracting. So this is where you have your high pressure. Uh, your diastolic pressure, this is the pressure exerted on the artery walls when the ventricles are relaxing. Okay, so uh, that's going to be a lower pressure, you know, when the ventricles are relaxing compared to when they're contracting. And you can see here, here there's a pressure cuff around the arm here. And, um, you know, if the blood pressure systolic is 120, that means that the blood vessel will still be clamped shut at that pressure. Now, once it goes down to 80, then you have an unimpeded flow of blood, you know, in a person that has uh, blood pressure of 120 over 80. So the first number in a blood pressure indicates the systolic pressure in millimeters of mercury, so in this case 120, and then the second number of the blood pressure measurement is the diastolic pressure, which in this case is 80. Now, 120 over 80 is actually the um, normal blood pressure for the average person. Okay. Now, generally speaking, it's it's okay to have a little lower blood pressure than higher because there's more health problems associated with um, high blood pressure than low blood pressure, depending on the extremeness of the situation, of course. Now, blood pressure. I want to talk about this in terms of you know what's getting into a dangerous range. Um, hypertension is basically a term used to describe high blood pressure. This is chronic abnormality, high abnormally rather, high blood pressure, which is characterized by values greater than 140 over 90. 120 over 80, that's that's normal. You know, in between 120 over 80 to 140 over 90. Uh, you could say, well, it's getting towards the higher side, but it's still in the normal range. But as soon as you get over values equal to or above 140 over 90, then it starts to become a cause for concern. Okay, now some of the side effects of high blood pressure are, uh, are things that can happen because of high blood pressure is, um, first of all, damage to the heart, okay, and damage to other internal organs. But the heart is the main one have to worry about because uh, you know if the heart has to deal with that pressure it's pumping against that pressure all the time and it can actually start to wear out under you know those types of conditions over long periods of time and end up in a uh, you know heart attack so you don't want that so it's better not to have too high blood pressure okay so here it shows um, you know systolic blood pressure. Normal's between 90 and 120. So if it's a little lower, it's still in the normal range. Diastolic, 60 to 79. Okay, so, or pretty much 80. And that's still in the normal range. Now, prehypertension is between, for systolic, 120 and 139. And for diastolic, between 80 and 89. Now, stage 1 hypertension would be a uh, systolic pressure above 140 to around 160 and a diastolic pressure from about 90 to around 99. So that's stage 1 hypertension already. Uh, but they've got another designation which is stage 2 hypertension where you have a systolic pressure that's above 160. Now this is definitely getting into the dangerous range uh, where you're looking for blood vessel failure um, and if that happens in the wrong place then that can be, you know, fatal. And if you have a, a brain aneurysm, okay, or, or a burst blood vessel in the vein because of too high pressure, uh, well, that'll kill you in a hurry, okay?
All right, so that basically uh, covers the topic we wanted to cover today. Now, in your book, it, it'll talk a little bit about the pressure of, of taking or the procedure of taking blood pressure with an instrument called the sphygmomanometer. Uh, so that's the you know the whole cuff thing that the doctor would put around your arm and pumps it up with the little rubber ball device and, and looks on, uh, you know, use a stethoscope and looks on um, a pressure gauge as he does that. Okay, and they start to release the pressure and, and they pressurize the cuff initially to the point where no blood flow happens. But as soon as it goes down to, to be equal to your systolic blood pressure, then you'll start hearing in the in the stethoscope, you know, uh, a heartbeat sound. Okay, as soon as you hear the heartbeat sound, then you know as you let down the pressure that that pressure is the systolic pressure, and then you let it keep going down until you can no longer hear the heartbeat. You can no longer hear the heartbeat uh, once you know the pressure goes down further. Is you have unimpeded blood flow at that point. Okay, and that's known as your diastolic pressure. So the unimpeded blood no longer makes any sound, and that's why, um, you know, the, the sound of the heartbeat disappears. Okay, so once you have watched this tutorial, make sure you submit a tutorial summary. Um, you have any questions? Sure, contact me. Recording stopped.